uh, after that, you made a couple of films. You sort of rounded off your terror sequence with a couple of films that had less identifiable themes of that kind. It was much slicker films, Schizo and The Comeback. Was, what were you trying to do there by making your films maybe more acceptable in America, perhaps, or something along those lines? Was there a thinking behind well, that? Well, <clears throat> we always wanted that American sale, and I was always very uh, lucky with those. By, you know, because, uh, uh, for a number of my films went out through um, American International Pictures, Sam Arkoff. Um, and uh, yes, I mean, that was, that was really the way to do that. And also, <clears throat> after House of Mortal Sin, um, David uh, McGillivray and I seemed to come to a point of impasse. I think David was um, disenchanted, I think. I think when, see, what happened with House of Mortal Sin was that it, 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 it was picked up for distribution by Columbia Pictures for worldwide distribution. And uh, it opened at the Warner Leicester Square. I mean, the, the, the pavilion was a nice, good theatre to premiere movies in, but, but the Warner Leicester Square was the flagship theatre of the West End where all the major pictures opened. And here was House of Mortal Sin going in there. And I think David, you know, and this, he was a young man at the time. I think he was ambitious. And I think he got a bit disenchanted with... Um, uh, you know, he said, I had a lunch with him after House of Mortal Sin opened and he thought, he said, we ought to be moving up, we ought to be making bigger pictures. And I said, well, you know, David, you can do that, you can, but I'm not, I'm this, I'm this, you know, sleazy guy that makes these shit kickers, you know, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, nobody will ever accept me making a big picture. They will with you, you can go and write, you know, what you like. I mean, you're a writer, you can write what you like, you know, it's, uh, but um, so we, Schizo was a, was a picture that, that we didn't put into as much as we should have put into it. Um, David wrote it. Um, uh, I wasn't happy with the script. I gave it to another writer to, uh, to rewrite, and then, uh, which was the wrong thing to do. I probably should have given it to Michael Armstrong, um, who was a, a very good writer. Um, but... Uh, he was attached to a, a buddy of mine making films with him, and I, so I couldn't do that. Uh, and then it came back with David, but we weren't happy with that, and, and, and that was the end of David and I's relationship, really. Uh, I think the first film in this season that they showed was The Comeback, mm -hmm. in which you reversed the usual woman in peril thing and had yeah. a male pop star as the, as the man in peril. I know. I know, I know. We're making a rod for your own back there. I mean, you know, that's what you do with a horror movie. You put a, you put a vulnerable, uh, pretty, sexy girl in terror. In this case, I mean, what was I thinking of? I put a, a six foot three inch handsome macho guy in terror. I mean, uh, you've got <laughs> made a rod for your back before you start, haven't you? Well, the film works. It, well, it does work, but, but, but it works because of the content, because of the scenes, you know, so it became a, a you know, there were, there were some particularly nasty murders in the movie. Mm. And, uh, you wanted so Brian Ferry at first, I believe. Yes. Yeah, I, I think did, the yeah. first time anybody ever heard that was when you told me on the commentary track, actually. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Um, but you well, got... That was, the, that was the original idea, and I, I'd actually offered Brian Ferry a... a uh, I, I'd, I'd offered him schizo yeah. before John Layton took the part. And, and, you know, there was this idea that uh, I thought he might want to get into movies, and, uh, uh, and uh, as they all do, they all say, oh, yes, well, yeah, yeah well, well, think about it. Yeah, I like the script, yeah, and then, you know, and then nothing happens. Um, and the same thing was happening with the comeback. Uh, I'd had a positive reaction to the script and, uh, well, we'll see, you know, there's a tour coming up and, uh, well, he's in the studios at the moment doing this because at that time, Brian Ferry was very hot. Uh, I thought he was very good. I thought he was a great looking guy. I mean, he looked like a young Clark Gable in those days. I mean, he was, uh, and he had a great, uh, uh, good following. Uh, and then I was just uh, mulling over this and I was watching television one night and, and, uh, Macmillan and Wife came on with that series with Rock Hudson and uh, uh, Susan St. James, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And Jack was the guest star and playing a, playing a rather unsympathetic character. So, uh, and I thought, hey, yeah, you know, I'll, uh, what about Jack? Um, and I'd met him before. And, Jack um, Jones, who, Jack who you're Jones. still friends with, I believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We, we, yeah. we hang out together. Yeah. <laughs> you both have homes in California? Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah. We do. Now, look, before I throw this open to the audience, we'll take a few audience questions. Let me just handle your last film to date. Right. Um, 
which was made in 1982, uh -huh. House of the Long Shadows, another right. film with House of in mm -hmm. the title. Now, the Long Shadows of the title, you couldn't get better, were Christopher Lee, Vincent Price, Peter Cushing, and John Carradine, uh -huh. with Sheila Keith in there, too. And Sheila Keith in there, as well. Now, how was that as an experience? Uh, just great. I mean, just great fun. I mean, you didn't have to direct. You just stood there and said action. I mean, it was just no, really. I mean, you, d you, you. D I mean, I, I, on one occasion, I did try. Uh, there was a, there was a particularly funny little line, and I, I, I thought, oh, I'd better have a word with Vincent. And I said, Vincent, can I have the word? Uh, I, can I make a suggestion on the delivery of? Uh, uh, and he looked at me. I, I've, I've never, you know, he'd looked at me. He said, Peter, I know how to deliver the line. <laughs> You know, I mean, it was just, I mean, I, I felt that high, you know. <laughs> well, uh, relative to your other films, it's, it's quite a, it's quite a, a relatively, um, uh, cosy isn't quite the right word, but it's a sort of old dark house thriller. Yeah, well, um, yeah, well, it, 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 I sort of came out of retirement to make this movie. I mean, I got a call from Menachem and Yoram, uh, who were starting a company called Canon Films, which went on, of course, as you probably all know, because you're all film buffs, uh, to make a, a great number of films. And... Um, this was the, the they, they'd just started up. I mean, there was just, there was myself, they would get, they, they'd, they'd got Michael Winner to make The Wicked Lady, and they'd got Brian Forbes to make a movie, and they wanted a horror film. And so they called me, and I went in, and, and I had a script written by uh, Michael Armstrong, and it was called Deliver Us From Evil, and it was a, uh, about an aborted fetus that came back to Earth to claim its life. Uh, which was which I thought was was good because it was all sort of anti-abortion and I thought that'll stir them up the wrong way <laughs> and uh, I've got, uh, You know, I, I, I pitched it at, uh, at at Menachem and Yoram across a table and they just sat there staring at me and said what is this? <laughs> this is not horror picture. I want horror picture with uh, with uh, with Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi and, uh, and I said well they're dead <laughs> <laughs> and they said well get footage get footage uh, and, and uh, so I, I th that's what they wanted they wanted the they wanted uh, s films that were 20 years out of date or a film that was 20 years out of date and and uh, and I remember going back to to Michael and saying well they don't want our they don't want our script so we've got to, we've got to do this sort of old fashioned horror movie and I remember his, his face dropped like that Michael uh, and I said well look, we'll do a homage let's do a homage let's do it as a sort of a little satire and uh, uh, and that's what we did uh, but it was great fun and they that's what they wanted to do I mean it was the only thing that we could get them together on was to just to sort of say well you know this is our swan song and this is a tribute to us which is what what the film was intended to be I say it's different from your other films because it's an old dark house film but in fact there are old dark houses in all your films yeah, yeah. we've got an old dark prison in this one uh, there's an old dark theater uh, an old dark farmhouse an old dark presbytery uh, and of course you do lay on the, the, the gothic stuff people like to see even within these modern dress um, scenarios the, yeah. the film we're about to see starts with a good old thunderstorm yeah uh, so you know I, th I think it was a brilliant mixture of yeah. ancient and modern if you like <coughs> yes, I, th I think this is the the uh, the new HD master, which was done for uh, this House of Whipcord. Um, was the new HD master we had made, but I think it was made for for television prints and for CD uh, for for DVD prints. So I hope it isn't going to be too light because it's all supposed to be very very low key. The lighting on this movie, and I think they 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 light, lightened it up. And I hope uh, I hope it's not going to spoil anybody's uh, enjoyment of it. But uh, you know, I just thought I'd throw that in. Yeah. yeah. Well, we hope the house is suitably dark. Yeah. Basically. Now, is there anybody in the audience who'd like to ask Pete Walker a question? There's one right over there. Peter, um, as a, a writer who writes about films and music, I have to ask you, I've followed your career and I've noticed that um, there's always a link to popular music in there somewhere. You've used Jack Jones, Jigsaw, Chris Jagger, Christopher Sanford, um, Jess Conrad. You were talking about um, uh, the possibility of Brian Ferry, and I even heard a rumour, which maybe you can corroborate, uh, that had Brian Ferry and or, or Jack Jones taken the role in the comeback, that possibly uh, Ringo Starr, um, Scott Walker, and Cat Stevens had been in the frame. And even there's about three films, I think this one 
and yeah, have some awful scene, the scene where John Yule catches one in the face with a kettle, where you hear the music of John Congos. I just wondered, uh, were you much of a fan of, of the music of that time, or did you keep uh, a finger on the pulse? Well, the first question has to be a terribly difficult one that I find very hard to answer. The answer really is no. Um, and everybody, everybody uh, took me to task for not having a very good musical knowledge, um, you, you know, or, 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 or a musical taste, should I say. Um, I mean, music has always been kind of important, hasn't it, in movies? But uh, uh, it, it's only coincidence that, 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 that these, these things sort of happened. Half the names you mentioned there actually weren't um, uh, sort of uh, brought up. I mean, I, Ringo Starr wasn't... Com um, thought of really i mean it may have he may have just been well who can we have uh and uh, we thought of ringo Starr, but i mean he was never seriously considered the script never went out to him and uh, uh scott walker no i mean i know that that that, that never uh, uh that never actually happened i don't think that he, that that thought either i mean people have su suggested all sorts of things like alvin stardust was thought of but i mean that that's not use of Jigsaw in Home Before Midnight um, stuff, yes. which is uh, probably a film that due to its content hasn't done their chances of a career revival much <laughs> but uh, what, yeah, what do you think of the, the sort of the, the, the plot of that film now in relation to certain shall we say revelations either untrue unconfirmed or confirmed about certain celebrities of the well there, I mean it was a film about underage sex and and here again we were going, it, uh, there's always been this there's always been this uh, uh, controversy about underage sex uh, and and we took it to task here and the reason and 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 here again it was me so tr trying to be controversial by taking the the male side you know uh, where a man had inadvertently got himself involved with a uh, an underage girl um, and we thought that it would rub everybody up the wrong way which indeed it did um, so, uh, um, you, you, but, but, you know, I mean, all the, 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 the Savile stuff and the ensuing stuff that, uh, that was in today's Daily Mail, for example, about the, the MPs and the celebrities involved in some house in Barnes, you know, uh, which is being covered up. I mean, but all this stuff, I mean, you'll always have the, 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 the there will always be this, uh... Not new at all, is it? No, it doesn't. I mean, I think Home Before Midnight is quite a, a superb film, it has to be said. Well, thank you. Yeah, despite, you know, all of the, the controversy around it. I just maybe couldn't quite take Mark Burns so seriously as an authoritarian. Well, th this, is, this is another conversation. The, mo the most <laughs> difficult... The, the most difficult... The most difficult thing about making that film was casting the parents. Because we wanted the parents to look very, very young. So... Uh, that was the whole idea. That we wanted the parents to look young, uh, uh, so that the mother almost looked like the sister mm. of 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 the girl. So the guy could be forgiven for thinking the girl was over fourteen because the girl was supposedly fourteen. So, but but uh, and when I went to cast it, I mean, I, uh, because they were good, they were they were both good parts. Oh, the problems I had. I went out to, because I knew a lot of actors, you know, who were in their late 20s, early 30s, who I wanted to play these parts. Uh, and they were most offended. I lost a lot of friends. Peter, why are you, why are you offering me this part? I'm still playing juveniles. <laughs> You're asking me to play the mother of a 14-year-old girl? You know, I mean, this, was, this is what I was getting from everybody. I won't, I won't be churlish and mention the names of the artists who are still around. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that was, that's what I was getting. Anybody else? There's one right here. Yeah, but, uh Miss Walker, before you uh, went into your terror films and while you were making some of the sexploitation films, you also did some thrillers, so Man of Violence, uh, Die Screaming Marianne. Were, were you, did you kind of move away from wanting to make thrillers into making terror films, or would you have liked to...? It was just a transitional thing, really. I mean, all those thrillers... God, it's it's. They, I, I, you you mention all those films, and I'm 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 trembling with embarrassment. You know, when you when you talk about those films, because they, they 
they they had to have certain ingredients in order to sell them. I mean, that's that's what we 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 went for. And in those days, it was just you know you could you went for the maximum nudity and as much violence as you could get away. You know, it was it, it, all those things were contrived, and it was uh, you know to uh, I'm not listen I, I'm not a a, a, a great artist or I'm not going to try and pretend I'm some kind of uh, uh, a person of great uh, 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 ability or anything but but it was it's very it was very very difficult making those transitional pictures and it was um, <sighs> The exploitation wasn't wasn't a lot of fun. I, you know, I'd, I'd much rather have been making more intelligent films. I have a couple more. There's one there. Yeah. Um, what is your favourite Pete Walker film? <laughs> Interesting. Good thought, actually. Um, a lot of people have asked me that, and I I don't know. I'm inclined to go with Jonathan actually, and say The House of Mortal Sin. Um, <coughs> I it, it, I had. Maybe I, I, I just had a lot of fun on it. I like, you know, I, for once, I had good actresses. You know, I had two good actresses, Stephanie Beecham and Susan Penn Halligan. And I, uh, there wasn't this business of having to talk a young juvenile girl without any experience through, uh, through her lines and all that kind of stuff, just, just purely because she was pretty and I wanted her to take her clothes off, you know, uh, which, which was always a problem on films of those days. Nowadays, you know, here again, you know, it's, it's different. Every actress expects to take her gear off and it's all, you know. <laughs> but... Um, no, House of Mortal Sin, I think, although the one that worked best, I think, was Frightmare. It was Frightmare. The one that's, I, I think that was the one that worked best. Uh, oh, that's where it was filmed, yeah, Isha and Richmond, yeah. <laughs> there was somebody right up there at the top. Have you been back to Little Dean Jail since you finished? Uh, no, uh, somebody somebody talked about it the other day. They said that there's a they, they've allocated a room there or one of the cells uh, as a kind of a, a, a kind of shrine to House of Whipcord. <laughs> would you, would, you, would no. you like to go? <coughs> well, it's a long drive, old boy. <laughs> I'm, not offer, I'm not offering uh, to take it personally. I'm good friends with the guy who lives there now, uh, and a thoroughly decent chap, despite what the Daily Mail. Um, he does have a room dedicated uh, to your to your film posters, cuttings. Um, he lives there it, it, because he lives upstairs. it was a derelict police station. It had been an old it had been an old jail, as you know. I mean, it was. I mean, it is a jail. It's a bit. It, it had big tall yeah. thing. Still there. It, it houses his uh, crime through time collection, which is a very eccentric uh, body of work. He would be here today, but he's at a business meeting uh, in Boom. This is a bit unorthodox, but can I give you his business card? <laughs> Please do. I mean, if, it, if I'm ever going through there, I'd love to. <laughs> he lives in the jail, haven't you? <laughs> you. Sorry. Not at all. That's he wonderful. Loves your work. Well, bless you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, he, and this guy lives there, does he? he, lives he live, uh, what do you mean? Well, who lives downstairs? Yeah, the museum is downstairs. Oh, the, oh I see. He lives upstairs. Fantastic building, which is kind of why I'm here. Uh, right, I have to say, I have to say, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna spoil it for the, for, the, but we only use the exterior. That's fine. Yeah. Where were the cells filmed? Well, the cells were filmed in North London. Ah, yeah. well, I've got to go back to my seat. Please do, please do. Okay. Don't, yeah, I know. Do. We'll have, we'll have just one more question, which I think was over there. Yeah. If you carried on making films, and I really, really wish you had, because I think they're the most interesting horror movies of the, of the 70s, how would you rub somebody up the wrong way now? What area do you think you would have gone into? I, I, I'm asked this all the time, and that's why I'm not making films, I think. Uh, I don't think you can any longer. Uh, I think people are so numb, aren't they? I don't... I, I, I don't th I don't think you uh, you know the exploitation films don't exist any longer. You know I um I I'm sure there are still subjects um that you can you can pick up on but you're not going to shock anybody anymore. Really. And and you know if you look at Mortal Sin, Frightmare um and uh this one uh, 
they, they were regarded totally differently 40 years ago uh, than, than, than they are now. But it's, a, I mean, that's a good, uh, a good thought. And uh, what were you doing at Canon? I was at PR for two years. Oh, right, okay. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> well, on that note, um, I'd like everybody to thank Peter Walker for such an interesting talk. Thank you.